yard at Sun when I was born in 1994. They were told to leave by the council. This often happens to travellers when people don't want them around. However, the council were very kind and let them stay until I was six weeks old. We then travelled to our first village of the season, stoked by Claire near Haverhill. Mum and Dad took the fair to the same villages every year and often the locals would bring gifts out to us. After building up all the equipment, they had to run the stuff as well as Mum looking after me. Occasionally, we had other families travel with us, bringing other pieces of fairground equipment. When I was christened in Dad's home village of Belgium St Paul, the local coach operator, Mr Amos, laid on a bus to the church because so many of the older villagers wanted to see the new baby Catton. Many of them could remember my ancestors travelling with the fed for World War II. Our home was in a showman's living wagon called a Sipson Special. Built in the late 1960s, it was 9 metres long, just under 3 metres wide. It was high off the ground and we had to go up 5 steps to get in. Dad pulled the wagon with his lorry which had the generator and other equipment in. Mum and Dad slept in the only bedroom and when I was first born I slept in a drawer by their bed. As I got bigger I had a cot in the living room and then slept on the settee which turned into a double bed. The living room had mirrors of peach and grave glass studded with crystals. One mirror was over the kerosene fire which was made of polished copper. The kitchen had a full-size cooker run on propane gas. The fridge didn't always work because sometimes we didn't have electricity. The sink didn't have taps as there was no running water. That meant no flesh and toilet. Our loo was a stainless steel bucket and jacket affair in a build-up casey. No joy in a nasty morning, believe me. Our water was fetched in stainless steel cans and in a milk jug. Washing was mostly done by hand, as people used to complain at the sound of the generator. Mum used to have to start to run her own twin tub washing machine. It was very cosy in the wagon in the winter. The windows used to be thick with ice behind the blinds, but the rooms were very warm. The fire was alight continuously from October to May. Once, when Dad lit it, it exploded in his face and blew his eyebrows off. I think that's why they're bushy now. Anyway. When Mum lit it, I used to stay well away, cuddling my toy puppy and eating biscuits. I used to have quite a few late nights on the fair. We used to open at 6pm, so Mum made my bed up ready so I could go to bed when I wanted. Year after year, we watched the young children grow up into their teens and the teenagers grow up at to parents themselves. I never went to school properly until I was eight when we stopped travelling full time. My first school was Wortham but only during the winter months. When travelling I had a travel education service teacher come out to check the work that my mum had done with me. The teacher used to give mum work to teach me during the rest of the week. My mum taught me to read and write and do simple sums. Yeah. Now I'm at school full time, it's nice to have permanent friends. Before, I made friends weekly with the children of the villages we visited. I have to get up on time every day now to get to school, whereas I never used to wake up early because of the late nights I had. Living in a house has some advantages, especially when it's windy. The wagon used to move and shake in big gusts. With our house being double glazed, we can't notice anything. I have more toys now. Storage space was tight when we travelled. But who needs toys when you have a whole fair to keep you entertained? <laughs>
characters in Travelling Community, but none so strange as when we had a circus open at our winter quarters. Mum lifted the blind in the kitchen early one morning, and there was a pair of camel's lips pressed against the window. It had broken its tether and decided to visit us. Put these memories down so I'd never forget them. When I'm older, I might get back on the old road again where my heart belongs.